from Replay Team. Welcome, guys. Hey, thanks. Well, appreciate it. Appreciate you having us. Yeah. You guys are joining us from Austin, Texas. Is that right? Yeah, you got it. Great. Great place to be. I was just uh, visiting there a couple of weeks ago and got some good brisket. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ton, tons of good brisket uh, uh, to go around here, for sure. Yeah. Barbecue yeah. is, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way of life. Uh, and tacos and Tex Mex and all kinds of stuff. I know. I, I hadn't been for a few years, so I made sure and I, I checked all the boxes there. Trust me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Theta community, uh, for the most part, has already gotten really familiar with you guys. I know there's a lot of excitement about what you're building, but um, still, just for the benefit of those who aren't familiar with Replay yet, would love if you could just first start and uh, talk a little about what is Replay, what you're building, um, and, and uh, yeah, what, what's, what have you built so far? Yeah, 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 for sure. We can get into into all of that. So, so thanks. So, um yeah, just for the benefit of, of the Theta community, which has been awesome so far and, and diving into our Discord and everything and asking good questions. Um, for those who don't know, um, we're building a content tracking and payment protocol um, on top of the blockchain. That's what Replay's uh, kind of core val uh, value proposition is. And the reason uh, we're doing that uh, is to help content owners more efficiently uh, deliver their content into a large and uh, rapidly growing video ecosystem. So we believe the video ecosystem is entirely uh, too complex and fragmented with lots and lots of stakeholders and different uh, vendors that are required in order to get a piece of content from point A to point B, uh, which ultimately is uh, kind of creating uh, a problem area for, uh, for content owners that want to maximize their business. And we think that by leveraging the blockchain, particularly the Theta blockchain, that we can bring uh, a, a protocol to market that allows us to simplify the workflow for content owners um, as it comes to kind of running and scaling uh, their video business. With visibility and kind of accountability, we can create um, new opportunities for content owners uh, to generate revenue and, and ultimately to get paid uh, faster. Chris threw it up on the screen, but. Um, to, to sum that up, we're, we're working on developing the most transparent, robust, and agnostic video tracking protocol so that content owners and distributors um, can, can do their business more efficiently and get paid more quickly. Yeah. And this is, uh, for, for those that don't know, this is actually a, a solution born out of a lot of the problems you've seen from both of your own experience in the video space. What's, uh, what's the background in that? What were you seeing in your prior roles that led you to make Replay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, over the years, um, you know, we, we've been involved in building hundreds of video streaming apps that are used by millions and millions of people. Um, and these are kind of three core problems that we, we, we've distilled here, uh, but they tie to, to the same thing. You know, if you were to talk to a content library owner today, they'd probably tell you they've never been busier, right? There's a lot of demand for their content across hundreds and hundreds of channels. I think we have a number here that says, you know, the average content provider, and this is someone that owns, you know, a small catalog of content, right? Uh, or, or could be larger, but just think about it as, as a mid-sized content company. They're trying to maximize their business, trying to do work with 25 or so distributors on average. Um, and we asked them the question, you know, and we've seen the question asked, like, you know, how, how, you know, how many distributors can you work with? Um, and they're really limited because of all of the fragmentation, the work that's required to actually get a, a content, a piece of content from point A to point B. So um, when it comes to, uh, you know, our, our kind of uh, visibility in the past is as there's a lot of friction in getting content onboarded into a specific video uh, endpoint or platform for delivery. And all of that work, um, you know, uh, creates limitations on uh, the businesses of these content providers. So essentially they're not able to, you know, work with more than 25 partners. They're spending hundreds of hours a month managing payments to various stakeholders that they have in their business. And the worst part of it in many ways is that for a video that is played today, um, they're not getting paid for months and months and months because there are so many fingers in the pie in terms of advertising companies and uh, rev shares along the way from various platforms that have to collect before the actual content owner gets paid. Um, so we saw this occurring um, in, in previous businesses that we've been involved with time and time again. And the reality is, it, you know, 
this is actually a problem that not only has existed for a while, it's actually only getting worse because we're in a world now where there are thousands, well, forget thousands, there's tens of thousands of apps alone on a platform like Roku or Android Fire, you know, or a Fire TV mm -hmm. that are looking for content, yet you have these distributors that are maxing out at 25 partners and cannot find the resources or the tools to scale their business. Um, actually, uh, actually, yeah. You actually, a, actually slide up here that kind of goes into a little bit of a detail uh, around what why it is convoluted, right? And many of these, you know, library owners, these um, studios, even, I mean, they're not as sophisticated, right? They kind of uh, they have to work. They have to kind of work with different vendors and different solutions to do different aspects before it gets to the point of you know an end point of, of, of a viewer watching their content right um and 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 for them it's a lot of legwork it's a it's heavy lifting today uh and that's why it's capped at like that 25. a best case uh a, a library holder maybe works with 100 if they're like pretty sophisticated and yeah. but majority of them are not like majority of them are like so some of them they just like give people like S3 buckets access or FTP ad, like, you know, it's just like very like, just, just kind of nascent in the way they work. Uh, yeah. And that does not help the ecosystem, obviously, because on the other side of the pot, like on this side right here on the network side of the distribution platforms, they're all looking to license the best content that they want for their, for their audience. They want, they also want, they're also kind of motivated by as, a seamless workflow as possible too, because they also want to be able to get the content to the user, the, to the viewer as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to we're, we're trying to kind of ultimately, you know, Dan mentioned earlier, it is ultimately a tracking protocol that we're building, and it's it's also uh, and, and the purpose of that tracking protocol is to make it as efficient as possible to transact between the two parties. Yeah. Uh, and once we do that, it just opens up so many other opportunities. Yeah, I mean, in my view, even just solving a six month of wait time to pay out oh, yeah. would be a total game changer. I mean, that's got to be uh, uh, already yeah. quite frustrating for uh, a company. It it's unheard of. You know, you expect net 30 payment as a, as a company, not net 180. And oh, yeah. what might be frustrating for a company, if you're a small content producer or content provider, that could be the difference between staying afloat or not. Oh yeah, and and a lot of these things are a hundred percent. I'm sure we've we've seen good, uh, strong, uh, you know, mom and pop streaming services go out of business because of that delay. But beyond that, you know, net thirty is one thing, but they're getting you know, like you said, they're getting net, they they might sign a net thirty deal, but still only get paid net one eighty because it's net thirty from when that middleman gets paid uh, yeah, yeah. And that middleman might be net 60 from end of quarter from one of the large platforms mm -hmm. and so it's the downstream effect of that payment delay um that that really um convolutes the problem and again the the consumer is enjoying that content today and so there is a way to streamline that and a big part of that is just is also tied up in this middle fragmentation because that a lot all of that reckon you know, forget a lot all of that reconciliation today is happening on a spreadsheet mm -hmm. actually the the other aspect we never is, is we got into more is is the visibility aspect like even if when you are getting paid yeah. they don't really tell you like okay like they, they just tell you this is how much you made that's an honor system yeah it, we, we're operating in an honor system yeah, so that's uh, uh, the uh, the beyond just uh, streamlining the payouts for this. Yeah, I think there's other use cases you're solving here as well, like uh, fraud or or at, to be a, a little nice or at least misleading uh, accounting for yes. for how many views you have. Yeah. Exactly, and I think the way that we are approaching this, we we have you know obviously uh, large ambitions and have a, a pretty large view of where uh, replay will go as it scales. But first and foremost, we're, we're tackling this uh, tracking and visibility uh, component, because if you can do the tracking and visibility well, um, then you've kind of opened the door, uh, you know, to create obviously uh, trust where there wasn't any before. And then you could experiment and enable new things to happen. So by 
creating um, a, a, a system where a content owner can just trust that they're being paid fairly in real time. They can make their content available to a larger group of distributors. Um, those distributors can then enable new business models where their consumers can pay more directly to those content owners because they're able to access this wider pool of content on this new predictable model that doesn't require a variety, you know, all these different reconciliations. Mm -hmm. um, and, and from that point, you know, I think the way, the, the way I see it is we go from kind of tracking and visibility to enabling new business models for consumers and creators, um, ultimately, you know, solving a massive discovery problem that exists for mm -hmm. consumers uh, as it relates to finding what to watch. Because remember, we're all doing this now every night. We're in two or three different streaming services, jumping from show to show. Yeah. Um, and that's because of the various walled gardens that have been created in this space. Um, and then last but not least, if you can measure it and measure it well with relates to, you know, any piece of content um, as it relates to, to performance and financial performance over time, um, you know, we can, we can enable uh, new investment models for video that really weren't possible before. Yeah. Like more directly funding creators you like, or, or, you know, sort of the, the, the next evolution of a, a, a Kickstarter, a more efficient Kickstarter where it can go directly to the, the content you want produced. Yeah. C correct. Uh, creators. And I think uh, curators as well, um, where, uh, and, and those are some of the, the ideas we're, we're playing around. And, and, and that's the, that's the beauty of these smart contracts, right? So you can kind of easily figure out who's in the, who's, who are the stakeholders and, um, and, and, and help with, help with the, with the kind of distribution of, of funds and things like that. So there's a lot of things actually when we get to our roadmap, there's a lot of things we can talk about that, we, we, that really enhances. And with the, the, mm -hmm. the tracking as kind of the core, we're able to achieve things like that pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's jump to your roadmap. Cause I saw that was uh, released a few weeks ago and had a lot of exciting yeah. updates uh, on where you're taking it. I really, really painted the picture how the vision for replay is a lot bigger than people think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so our our kind of um, con you know we've actually released it. We you can take a look at it. It's pointed on our website too. Um, but um, you know our first idea, even though we're building the tracking protocol and the foundation for visibility, everything on the chain, um, we wanted to kind of build out a a, a consumer facing streaming service. We're calling it Rewarded TV. Um, it's actually due to launch this week, uh, or towards the end, towards the end of the week. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll make an announce, official announcement when we do that. Um, but the idea of Rewarded TV um, is effectively to adopt all aspects of replay into it. Um, we've signed on some really cool um, premium, uh, I would say, really good content partners. That are that have that have kind of that are facing the problems that we mentioned before, and and wanted to kind of uh, help accelerate that and and take advantage of of our solution. Um, so yeah, so we're we're going to announce that. So it's um it's a proof of concept streaming service, but we we are go we're going to be going uh, we're going to be um uh, really making a big investment towards actually uh, doing this. Um, it's going to be available on web on web and, and apps and uh, mobile uh, TV apps and so on. Um, but we're taking a, a different approach uh, to it. It's, it's going to be entirely ad free and entirely subscription free. Hmm. So what's the, what's uh, the core monetization? It was on ad fatigue. Mm -hmm. So we, we really wanted to embrace, um, we wanted to embrace, um, uh, can you repeat that question again? Sorry. Yeah, oh, sorry, Chris, you had a little bit of lag. The, the question was around the core monetization model. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. So we really wanted to embrace the crypto and the and the blockchain and the power of it and how it is all community driven and things like that. So we're actually incorporating some elements. Uh, if you look at what, what Replay actually does is it tracks consumption. So we want to allow users the flexibility to consume some of the premium content uh, via that model, like a consumption model. So they can, so we're also minting our own token, the R-Play token, that's uh, effectively um, uh, 
you know, a, a, a basically a theta uh, token. Um, and, and, you know, we're going to, that would be the, the, using the tokens, we can basically unlock content, mm -hmm. right? So and when you're unlocking content, you're actually unlocking um, uh, how much ever you want to watch. It's like, a, it's, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't say, like, I wouldn't say pay-per-view because pay-per-view is like, it's pay, know, as you go. it's pay as you go, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're watching, let's say 10 minutes into a movie and you hate it, you don't need to pay for the whole movie. You can just skip to the next one kind of thing. Oh, yeah. We're giving a little bit of a different, taking a little bit of a different hybrid approach to to watching content, and that's like premium content, obviously. And, and there is a significant amount of content that is completely free. Um, we're we're yes. we rolling out um, what we think are some pretty exciting uh, concepts as it relates to NFTs for unlocking content um, from individual providers across categories. So if you're a fan of horror movies or you're a fan of action movies. Um, we, we think there's a, a way to create a healthy ecosystem, uh, leveraging kind of uh, some of these, uh, you know, uh, new uh, new methodologies that are afforded to us by um, mm -hmm. NFTs being out in the world. Um, so it's a it's a combination of um, leveraging uh, NFTs uh, and, and the community, finding the right finding the right balance of incentives uh, for viewers as well as uh, content owners that have signed on, um, you know, to be a part of this model. Mm -hmm. um, and then over time, we'll be releasing more and more premium content and exclusive content that's available on a pay-as-you-go model. So I think where Chris's um, uh, screen got hung up for a second, uh, lag, what I think he was saying was, there's this kind of, you know, uh, there's this, you know, talk of uh, Netflix releasing an ad-tolerant version of, of Netflix soon. Yeah. and. Um, and we've all now got tons and tons of subscriptions, or many of us do. Um, uh, and and there, we think there's there's probably a, a better, more interesting way than just figuring out the the right amount of pain someone's willing to take in terms of ads or what their maximum monthly outlay is for every streaming service in the world. There has so there has to be. We we totally reset. To, you know, you cut the cable, and then we find ourselves ten years later. And I've got five subscriptions and I'm paying as much as I used to for cable. And, oh, yeah. And it's fragmented and, on on 500 different channels just like it used to be. Right. It's harder to find. And so if that is, I mean, the, 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 the ultimate vision, right, is like how do we find a model where you can give content owners confidence that they can now publish to all these places and have their rights? And obviously we're super excited about everything that you you all announced recently with with uh, MetaChain as well and yeah. you know, as it relates to black because that that has to be the future we need a universal uh standard for delivering content to all of these places there's mm -hmm. going to be more and more content everywhere there's a slide in that deck which i think we, we didn't show but you know i think the, the, this quote's been well said now right 80 percent of the consumer internet is now video right yeah. so how do we deliver as much video as possible uh, or, or, or make it available without a facing a future where we're not just juggling screens, we're also juggling apps within screens. And mm -hmm. I think part of that just comes with that, that just comes from, um, you know, visibility and a standard. Yeah. And we're hoping to be that standard for, for content uh, measurement. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on top, so basically soon after the rollout of the Rewarded TV, obviously it's going to be all, all the, there, there's a, there's a big component of uh, theta that's that's really involved it, that, that's, that really powers the whole ecosystem. Um, so we're 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 using the theta video infrastructure for uh, you know encoding and and storage and and CDN the, whole, the actual streaming content. Um, we're wrapping it. Um, with effectively, I actually have a, I actually have a, a slide on that and, and how it works. But yeah, so we're we're basically wrapping it with the theta. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're wrapping it with replay tech, and then and then effectively, these are these are streams that get distributed out uh, to the different different endpoints. Yeah, that's um, why I, that's why I love the rewarded TV name because it works on several different levers here. It's it's yes. it's, it's, it's yes, improving yeah. rewards for the content creators through replay yeah. tracking under the hood. It's rewarding all the the edge nodes and other workers that are, are yes, distributing yeah. video, doing the encoding, transcoding, and so on. Like it, it, it really it makes sense. It ties it all together. It does, <laughs> yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, we, 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 uh, we're really excited about it. And I think, uh, that um, that uh, concept, the, you know, that the kind of the, the what, what Chris mentioned there, as far as rap, uh, you know, data being behind the scenes on the stream side, we're, we're pretty excited about it as well because it's another friction point you can remove, right, from the content owner's point of view and the distributor's point of view is, well, so here's my content library. Who's going to handle the delivery of it? And and being, you know, we have to remain agnostic, but being able to package it all together more, yeah. it just takes a little bit more of the pain away right mm -hmm. and that's the idea and and that's the cool thing once the content is in our dashboard and it's pushed into rewarded tv our ultimate goal is to have every streaming service out there adopt our our uh, adopt replay whether it is mm -hmm. to reward their content owners or reward their viewers or whoever they're rewarding uh, we really feel like we can we can we can kind of be agnostic in that sense, and we're actually in fact we're already working on some really potential partnerships on the distribution platform side mm -hmm. uh, that are also interested in integrating replay. So that's a win-win for both the theta community and the replay community, because um, as we get more and more distribution platforms on board, uh, it's going to be a uh, it's 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 just going to accelerate the development of of, of the whole the whole infrastructure we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually uh, dovetails nicely. I mean, I think it's, it's certainly in the case of Reward TV using data and, and building a TNT20 token. Yeah, that's pretty direct where the value is. But more broadly, how do you see replay working within the Theta ecosystem mm -hmm. and, and and creating value yeah. for the Theta community? Yeah, you want me to take so? Um, sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you know, I'll let Chris share his his more uh, technical uh, point of view, but mm -hmm. um, you know, my uh, the, the, the point of view I share is we're actively and rapidly focused on engaging with large content libraries that face a business challenge. And we are hoping to attract them into the Theta ecosystem, um, you know, our ecosystem here, you know, right, collectively um, and have them bring their content uh, into it. And, and obviously that, again, that kind of core uh, friction point we mentioned of delivery plus measurement plus payment, right? We think is a pretty strong value proposition to onboard um, content libraries in mass. And, um, you know, we've, we've, you know, been fortunate so far and, and you know, anytime you're, you're talking to some, someone about anything new, as I'm sure you guys have experience with, right? You expect a lot of, uh, a, a lot of questions, but, um, you know, I think we have a good, um, we have a good understanding of the business problem. And so we're, we're getting some pretty, um, pretty, pretty solid feedback. So we hope to attract a lot of content into the, into the ecosystem. And mm -hmm. I think, uh, over, overall, um, you know, I think as we create the pressure from the content companies to ultimately adopt the standard, right. Putting on the old content is King adage. Um, we believe that more and more distributors will want to adopt the entire ecosystem and the entire stack. So as we, are able to provide, you know, kind of better discovery for content partners to these third party services. You know, I think, you know, data today works with a couple of streaming services, um, you know, providing back end infrastructure. We think that together we can accelerate the adoption um, of both the infrastructure side as well as the content acquisition side, right? If you think mm -hmm. about the way these, new, you know, new age, you know, the, the next wave of video distribution, right? You have your kind of customer acquisition costs, you have your content delivery costs, you have your content acquisition costs. Mm -hmm. My view is we're now together kind of providing two of those three things. Um, and actually there, you know, uh, there are models, uh, as, as Chris alluded to earlier, where um, you actually can incentivize, for instance, uh, folks that help in marketing and driving audience using smart contracts. So you really can solve an end to end problem. Um, uh, for, for both distributors and, and content owners. Chris, you want to share your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, just a, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just a few other points is obviously the more we are utilizing the infrastructure, all, all theta uh, node, op, you know, operators, stakers, they're all, you know, they're all uh, earning uh, their own uh, just for powering the network. So we're hoping to be uh, one of the biggest consumption consumer of the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and number two, uh, for our rewarded TV, our direct consumer 
streaming service, um, we've also integrated the um, Theta SDK, the peer-to-peer -peer SDK. So uh, we're, we're, we're trying to get more viewers. Uh, well, when viewers come to Roar TV, they're not only earning our play or watching, they're also earning T Fuel where, where applicable. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, so that means that we're, we're trying to also grow the, by being a TND20 uh, and, and building the whole thing on, on Theta blockchain, we're also going to be attracting a lot of direct like consumers that are uh, that are more and, and creating more awareness of the of the, of the ecosystem itself. So they, in turn, they're going to have to create wallets. They're going to have to stake more or buy or stake or earn when they earn the t tokens. They can actually use redeem it for something else in the ecosystem. Things like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely when uh, when we first got to AI. That was one of the things I thought would really be the differentiator in your what you're able to do is to, uh, because you've lived in this world and seen in firsthand these problems with this, you can speak the language of these content providers and what they need to change. Uh, and so if you have a solution that works for them, you basically yeah. act as a force multiplier for Theta overall, because the more content exactly. providers you on onboard on here, directly or indirectly, it's more and more users of, of Theta infrastructure underlying that. Even if it's ones that you know, they never need to understand the underlying distribution side of, of how edge nodes work. It's, they don't need to understand that part. They need to understand that you're solving their problem as a video, uh, right. as a content distributor. And then you are almost like the middle layer that brings the whole package to them. That's correct. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, we're, we're definitely, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's like a win-win. Um, we're, we're going to have similar, like the R play community is also going to have similar staking capabilities and like actually, you know, have bridges with the theta ecosystem as well um, in terms of, you know, how they can support the, the replay model and earn more. So there's going to be different aspects of like uh, R play rewards, I would say in the chain. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, um, Besides uh, rewarded TV, what's later in this year? What's the the roadmap look like? What do you guys? Uh, yeah. What's sort of the the long term vision once you uh, once of of course this launch is successful uh, and you start bringing on more content providers? Where does it go from there? Sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, from 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 our point of view, I think it's you know, so so we we get through the initial launch, which is really uh, the first showcase of. of both some of the content partners that are uh, are on board and, and some of the consumer facing uh, interfaces, we're rapidly working on onboarding more uh, more content libraries. Um, and then, Chris, maybe you want to speak in more detail as far yeah. as the asset dashboard um, yeah. that we made available, because that's really where where it starts to get exciting is how we open this up so that any existing service in the market that wants to discover content for distribution. Uh, is able to to come to yeah. them. We're, we're we're actually working on an asset management kind of asset portal, um, which allows, like Dan mentioned, a super simple process to kind of inject uh, uh, onboard content creators. Right. Um, we're, we're, I've talked about that commuted process that we had that that exists today. I think with the combination of the theta and the replay infrastructure, we can make that process simpler. Um, because that would be the first step to kind of getting them on board. And then we're also getting them on board on this new type of model, which is a consumption based model. They can obviously customize like their payment profiles and syndication profiles and things like that. So we're working on that kind of the back office, I guess you can say, mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for content owners. Um, because once we solve that as a foundation, uh, obviously they're feeding into water TV right now but they can expand to other places very, very quickly. Um, and that just means a wider adoption. That just means wider, uh, wider everything. Um, so yeah, so there'd be an asset, man, asset portal for content owners. And then there'd be a similar, um, uh, obviously as part of that portal, there's gonna be very deep analytics and metrics around what movies are being consumed and where and things like that as well. Um, we're, we're obviously collaborating with the data team as well to kind of embed some of the data analytics, the core analytics that are coming in on the chain uh, as well, so we can show all of that in one one place. Um, and then uh, they're also going to be they're also going to uh, have information about 
uh, their earnings and, you know, all the, the draw capabilities and things like that, kind of making that whole process simpler. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the, when we're doing the same thing, um, um, we're doing for consumers, we're doing that for distributors and viewers as well. So we're trying to make that, that whole ecosystem of content owners, the distributors, the distribution platforms and the viewers having a place where they can go and see exactly what's happening in real time um, and, and kind of transact directly on the, on the system. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so we're, we're, we're really gearing up for a pretty um, robust uh, kind of foundation for for, for, for I guess, taking over the, the OTT. Yeah, 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 content, you know, kind of content tracking and then content uh, access and unlock. Access. And, and that's kind of like the the, the, the core uh, things that, you know, you can expect in the next uh, couple of quarters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then as part of that, there's also, you know, we're going to be announcing that too. I mean, we, talk, we touched off upon it a little bit when we we're discussing the word TV, but there's going to be several flavors of nfts um and and and, and that's going to be predominantly for the, their it's kind of nft gated access to some premium content but they're having having or holding an nft allows you also some additional benefits around a multiplier for rewards that you might be earning as a viewer or even participating on certain um certain activities on the platform things like that so so that's also something we're work actively working on we're going to be using the the data pass uh, API and the mm -hmm. drops and, uh, and and all of that uh, and and figure out and, and do the whole workflow and the integration with, between our, our 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 user interface and and the infrastructure. So we're pretty excited to also use. That's the other uh, prop piece of the piece of the infrastructure we're, we're excited to use the, the DRM component that data recently kind of uh, enabled as well as the, yeah. um, the the data pass. So yeah, there's a lot of those capabilities that we're looking for. Uh, that we're going to start adopting into our into our platform as well as it's part of the roadmap. That's great. Yeah, we're we're very bullish on uh, the evolution of NFTs that have some use beyond just appreciation as art. Not that those don't yeah. have their place too, but I think course, yeah. the the sense of more utility are really going to inspire uh, a lot of enterprises that you know today they may think NFTs are just it's uh, just a art. It's a gimmicky kind of thing right. to them. They don't think they realize how much they can be used under the hood to users yeah. that don't even know their NFTs use it. But like you said, it's, exactly. being, it's being used in DRM that yeah. the end user probably shouldn't even know that's an NFT unless they're just curious. But it, it's just the, the simplest way to have a trustless way of letting that authorization pass from user to user. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And we, we actually talked, we were talking about this earlier today. I think that the, the, the whole concept of DRM is like, you know, what is that in a world where you can just trust that you're, you know, that, that you're getting, uh, you know, the value for the content as it's being consumed, right? And the whole, mm -hmm. uh, so, 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 so uh, the use cases um, we're really excited about, you know, are all tied to, you know, how do you uh, unlock content? How do you fund content in new and interesting ways kind of uh, allow an evolution of, of patronage to occur. Um, how do you incentivize people to, uh, to drive audience, right? How do you kind of think about affiliate marketing in a world where you're able to uh, create models that reward uh, holders in new and exciting ways? Um, and then, and then how do you kind of think about, uh, like we talked about, um, uh, we talked about kind of content aggregation um, and creation, but also uh, we touched on curation, right? How do you think about, um, you know, influencers in this world and 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 thinking about, you know, uh, playlists that uh, that folks might be interested in, right? Mm -hmm. and so there's, so the, the, we're excited. I mean, this is kind of scratches the surface, right? And and what we're really excited about and what excites me most about the space is, you know, this is for the community, right? So these are we're scratching the surface with ideas we've had and we're looking forward to hearing what ideas people actually come up with uh that take this to, to a whole new level as well yeah that that community focus element's a, a really exciting part of this and i think that um we need to to spend more time explaining what we say we mean saying like theta passes nft drm because probably for a lot of people they still hear drm and they just assume that means this yeah. is when a company bricks yeah. my software subscription because I didn't pay them more money in the future or something like that. Right, right, right. And it's, yes, that is a, a form of DRM, that's true. But it, what it really is, is just managing the rights of a, a piece of content. I think yeah, when they right. see the way we're rolling this out, where it's almost 
more of a, making it easier for the DRM to go back to the hands of the, the content Correct. creators, even the small content creators, so yes. that they can, like say, uh, crowd for, crowdsource funding uh, via tokens or NFTs uh, for, for funding a new piece of content or a new short form video or a documentary they make. And then DRM in this context means making sure token holders or NFT holders are the ones yeah. who get the content. And maybe that, you know, you fund it and you get an NFT and you could later decide you want to sell that NFT on a marketplace. And that goes to a new user who then has the rights to it. Yeah. it it's really trying to take the DRM and, and making it more extensible into to the people that should have it, not necessarily one corporation that figured out a way to lock out users. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And actually there's, uh, in fact, next week uh, will be uh, most likely is when the first uh, use case will be coming out of uh, showcasing this NFT T DRM. So I think it's going to be really exciting. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely going to bring that feel to you that this is a community focused uh, uh, creator that's yeah. issuing this and showing it. So I, I think you guys will like it. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. We're, we'll, we'll keep our, uh, our eyes peeled for that, uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, you, you talked a lot about, uh, of great things you're going to be bringing to the Theta community. And I, I appreciate always the kind words you guys say about wanting to build on Theta infrastructure and, and, and uh, the ecosystem and all, but I always like to try to keep it balanced a little bit and give you a chance to talk about, so what do you see that needs to that needs to come to the theta community or, or be built from theta labs or, or basically what would help enable your vision for replay and rewarded tv that that you need that you you think still needs to come yeah um i i think um you know i would say i mean there are obviously things that are that are already being worked on but um one you know the theta video api uh, you know, there are, there are, you know, improvements that can, that can be made that can, that can help us from a, from a sc scalability perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I, I, you know, we're obviously ingesting are going to start ingesting even more content, like much quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I think there's some, there's, that, that could be one big, one big uh, thing that we can definitely help, uh, work together on. Um, and then, and then I would say, like you know, we I read the, we obviously we, we read the uh, white paper on the meta chain. Mm -hmm. I think all of those things that you're talking about is kind of literally exactly what I would want. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so you know, faster. Uh, uh, you know, obviously we're gonna have we're, we're the tracking, so we're gonna be hitting the, the we're, we're tracking everything, every aspect of what's happening, the consumption side on the chain. So you can imagine the amount of transactions that we're gonna be hitting the system. So. Um, anything that can help with, uh, you know, both from a, um, you know, scalability side, cost side, uh, it, you know, is, is going to make a big, big impact for, for us as we mm -hmm. start the project. Um, yeah. and yeah. And then there were analytics also as part of it, uh, getting access to some of the uh, blockchain metrics, um, uh, and, and in a, in a seamless way to us. So we can, we can kind of get that data and, 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 it, the whole point of our our protocol is visibility so we want to be able to provide as much visibility as possible to to everyone uh you know to not just the content owners but the viewers as well like what's happening on the chain we really want to be this trustless I mean, that's the whole point of the blockchain we really want to be this this kind of a, a standard for like okay if, if if replay says you know it was watched a, a thousand you know hours then you know you can you can kind of say that yes, it it, is, it has been watched a thousand hours, uh, you know, yeah. comfortably without questioning it. Um, so yeah, yeah so these are a few things um, I would say, uh, and and of course even multi multi bit rate. Uh, there's some a few on the engineering side, like multi bit multi and like MBRs on the on the transcoding side. Mm -hmm. um, it can be more adaptive to all different protocols, and I think these are all things that are being already worked on. Yeah, I saw uh, yeah, that you uh, would, would love to be. Yeah. yeah, I saw that your team and, and Jay and Brooks were already working on uh, building out some of these things yeah. that you needed for replay, which is great. This is exactly what uh, we want to yeah, see. As your, this is you know, cut, this is the customer feedback that lets us get basically create the, yes. uh, where Theta needs to be to serve these different video clients. Um, 
so, and both yeah. on that side on the on the video specific stuff on like the multi bit rates and mm -hmm. and uh, scaling up ingest. Uh, but then uh, to your point uh, with MetaChain as well, replay is the exact type of of, right. uh, of company that we envision and protocol that we envision needs to have more flexibility and more ability to scale with uh, subchain. So glad we're aligned on that. I think you guys yes. are a perfect example of someone. Uh, and uh, yeah, looking forward to testing along the way, even before the release mm -hmm. of MetaChain so that we can continue yeah. to evolve and make it serve uh, partners, uh, partners yeah. like Replay. Absolutely, yeah, and, and likewise. Uh, yeah, team, likewise. The team mm -hmm. has been amazing, uh, obviously. Uh, there's one other thing, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're creating our own token, so you can imagine the con our community of content owners and viewers are start, they're gonna start uh, wanting to have um, anything we can do to kind of help with the, with the um, I would say the, the kind of the redemption or the withdrawal capability or bridging with other blockchains or converting mm -hmm. the other crypto, making that process simpler, uh, uh, you know, would also help our, would help our, our project too. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, that, 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 I would say is the next, would be the last one. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So, um, anything else, uh, I'll give you guys the floor as well. If there's anything you'd like to, to point out or discuss with theta community, uh, love to hear what's, uh, what's the message you'd like for people to take away if they're just learning about replay or where to go to, if they want to learn more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so to learn more, uh, it's imaginereplay.com. Uh, we do have uh, everything up there. We've got uh, kind of a view of our, our white paper that's evolving, uh, links to our uh, now public roadmap, uh, as well as our, our tokenomics uh, and, and, and uh, things like that. So we're, we're excited to have your feedback. Um, uh, Chris will share the, the discords. I think all the discords are out of Matt. Yeah, we're out there too. Yeah. And follows on Twitter and discord. Yeah. And we're going to make an announcement on reward TV as well. Very, very soon. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and, and I guess the takeaway for that announcement is, you know, this is, uh, it, it's early days. Uh, we're yeah. excited to bring this to you because we're excited about kind of the early adopters on the content side that are coming to the table. Um, we will continue to evolve that, uh, that product mm -hmm. as it comes out, but, uh, we'd love everyone, uh, to check it out and yeah. uh, look forward to everyone's feedback. This is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, early and exciting and, uh, yeah, we appreciate, uh, you know, all of you in the community, uh, for, for reaching out yeah. to us, asking us good questions. Yeah. I'm, I'm super excited for the launch next week as well. So I'll be tuning in. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, Chris, Dan, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, definitely enjoyed talking to you guys, and we'll have to yeah, do a follow-up in the, in the future as you guys are uh, further yeah. down on your roadmap. Yeah, that's good. That'll be a great thanks, Wes. Appreciate right. you having us. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Take care, Bye. guys. Yeah.